Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm back here at the original OG of filming spot locations. And guess what? I have that one Volvo that brings some surprising performance and efficiency is this vehicle right here. This is it. This is a 2024 Volvo XC Recharge. This is the top ultimate trim and it's the dark edition. But before we get into this luxury all-wheel drive Swedish luxury SUV, let's talk about what's going on here. This vehicle, the Volvo XC60, goes up against some pretty big names. BMW X5, of course you got the Porsche Macan, believe it or not, and vehicles like the Mercedes-Benz GLC. Now Volvo, stick it to their roots, keeping things unique, keeping things safe and that focus on safety, but also looking at adding electrification to the good old fashioned internal combustion engine. But what I want to find out is if you're looking for the best new German luxury SUV, actually I should say Euro luxury SUV, I'm so used to saying the German brands, should you go with the Volvo over the competition? Let's go ahead, let's dive into this XC90 recharge and find out. Right off the bat, the dimensions. It actually looks very classy and very sophisticated all at the same time. I love how they shaped and carved the areas for the headlight housing. You're going to have full LED headlights, Thor's hammer. That's the official name for the turn signal and the daytime running lamp. And the way that it kind of almost intersects into the grill gives it that extra style. Working our way down, we do have functionality in these gloss black corner uh, air intakes for the heat exchangers and all the way down you have some nice silver finish metallic silver finish and I'm really loving this light copper color I don't know if it's me getting older but I just really am digging how it fits the body lines now as we come across that traditional shaped Volvo grill you got the badge there with your forward-facing camera just a little bit of silver chrome everything else is going to be gloss black on the upper grill gloss black on the lower grill and you'll notice the inner cooler peeking from behind. I think one of the things that I like about this lower portion is how it extends forward and it definitely doesn't look as funky as a BMW and it doesn't look as boring sometimes how a Mercedes-Benz front end can look. I really think they hit the nail on the head. One thing I do have to zonk is the hood. I don't like the way it's got this weird overbite and I believe the whole purpose of that is so that for pedestrian safety and for front end collision, it's for absorbing that impact. From a styling standpoint, not my favorite. Now, as we rise up, you'll see that nice smooth curve to the front hood. It's got some great body lines. Some vehicles, it's just a flat slab of metal. This, you can see how they carved and it really kind of flows nicely as you go into the hood. Now, as we come around the bend, this has the optional super large wheels. Now, when you go dark edition, you're gonna get these nice satin black machine aluminum wheels. These are the bigger, larger wheel design. These are 22 inches, and I think the wheels really make this vehicle. Wheels are so important to help the look of a vehicle. On this Volvo XC90 Recharge, really does a great job. Those rotors are 15.2 inches in diameter. Of course, you're going to have some regen braking capability because this is a plug-in electric hybrid. That's what makes it so unique. And you have all-wheel drive. Now, one of my favorite touches, look at the way they flare the fender out and they painted it body color. And I'm going to have Steven kind of show that width of that body flare there, that fender flare looks fantastic. Coming down the side, smooth, clean style, you're going to have power fill, uh, folding mirrors with your painted black mirror caps, LED turn signals nice and blended in, and then we have panoramic roof, panoramic sunroof opens up in the front. They kept the roof rails nice and close and low to the line of the roof, and they went on the dark edition, you go black on all the trim. So it gives you that nice cohesive design. On the lower portion of the side of the vehicle, great indentation, nice side skirt. It's fascinating because yes, this is the same class as the Porsche Macan. Macan I view as more of a sporty SUV. 
This though is gonna surprise you. We got 455 horsepower and all wheel drive. Working towards the rear, same story. Steam is gonna swing around. That nice flared out fender appearance there. Looking great. I'm loving the color. Let me know how you feel about this color. Some people would say it's a fuddy-duddy fuddy -duddy color. I'm actually liking it. And then you have your traditional style to that great flow of the LED taillights. Looking good on the back of the Volvo. Short, stubby roof spoiler. I wish that they would extend this out a little bit more. And that's probably one of the reasons why they have an exposed wiper. There's not enough room to put it underneath the back of that spoiler. It's too stubby. You got the nice bold Volvo name. Where's my gloss black letters to tie in the whole dark edition theme? But like I said, this is the top dog. T8 all-wheel drive recharge with the LED lighting. XC90 badge, same story, should be blacked out. You can hear the sirens. Those are the heart attacks of people that drive German Euro luxury SUVs. But you'll notice we're gonna keep going. They're going off to the hospital. They'll be okay, I promise. I like the way they did a little bit of nice design in these lower corners, just to give it a little bit of pizzazz because they don't have any exposed exhaust. And I feel like that's a bummer to me. I would like to see a quad tip exhaust on this. Let me know how you think about having a quad tip exhaust on this XC90 recharge. But why don't we go ahead, let's pop the hood and see what we're working with. All right guys, we got the hood open and what's crazy is with the hood struts, you can see just how high it is. I mean, I can't even grab the hood you actually have to grab it from the side to close it. Plus, it's probably one of the fastest opening hoods. I mean, that's pretty intense. It might hit you in your face. You gotta be careful. But what do we have underneath the hood? We have a little bit of everything, to be honest with you. Engine cover, not my favorite. And it's weird, it's that Nerf softness. It's like a Nerf football. I guess that's for pedestrian safety. But what do we have? We have a two liter inline four turbocharged engine paired with an electric motor. And you could see that orange wiring and cables. That's your electric motor up front. And like I said, this is a plug-in electric hybrid. So you have 455 horsepower, 523 pound-feet of torque. It utilizes an eight-speed automatic transmission, 18.8 kilowatt battery pack. With that all-wheel drive, zero to 60 in about 4.3 seconds. So some of the competition with their higher spec performance Levels like the X5M or the Porsche Macan GTS will definitely beat this in a drag race, but here's where you're gonna win MPGs. 28 in the city, 28 on the highway gives you combined 63 MPGEs, but because this is a plug-in electric hybrid, you could go on pure EV for 35 miles. The vehicle weighs 4,731 pounds. So that's gotta be the most unique setting of this vehicle is having it to where you have your over 500 pound feet of torque you have your all-wheel drive but you could actually drive this totally silent for up to 35 miles but why don't we go ahead let's fire this up and see it roll All right, guys, we are inside this Volvo XC90 Recharge Ultimate Trim, Dark Edition. I know you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, how many names does this freaking thing have? Trust me, it's a mouthful. But the great news is, is that I think that Volvo is bringing some stuff for the competition. Now, I know you might also be saying, well, Joe, lay it on me. Money is is one of those things that I just don't have an infinite amount of, even though I try to. But I do want to obviously get a quality vehicle. How much is this? So MSRP, the way that this one is optioned, is $76,000. Let's see how it compares to the competition to the door panels. I love the style. Smooth touch material up top. Of course, we have the Harm, the uh, Bowers and Wilkins sound system with the aluminum speaker grill cover, two memory seat settings for the passenger seat, and then you'll notice the nice contrast stitching on the armrest. The one zonk I have is that cloth. The cloth has got to go. I wish that they would have used a different material, but I do love the door pocket. Easily put a whole five pound bag of Swedish meatballs from Ikea and a nice Swedish cola to wash it down. Going from the door panel to the dash, the stitching, the material is great. 
You'll notice the little flag there. Love the little attention to detail. The wood finish, this is real wood finish all the way across. And then what do we have for an infotainment system? You have that nine inch, still the older system, but I like the way it's integrated. It really gives it a clean look. Portrait style, because it's a vertical setup, you have your Google Maps. Once you get the hang of it, it's very easy to go through. And then my favorite part is when you go into driving, you'll notice how you have your different modes here. I could put it in pure, I could put it in power, that's gonna give you all 455 horsepower. Off-road, constant all-wheel drive for the snowy situations. And in this part, battery usage, you could put it on hold. Save the battery charge for when you get to the twisty bits to have fun. I throw it into reverse. Backup camera, as you can see, the sun's coming down. It's clear, I just wish it was larger, the image was larger. But other than that, looking good. AC, you gotta touch the screen. That to me is a zonk, but you have your dual climate control, you got heated steering wheel, and then you could go into your seats. We got heated seats, which are great. No ventilated seats. At this price point, that is ridiculous. So that is a major zonk. But you do have three stages of heated steering wheel, and then you're right back where you started. Real volume knob, that's a nice touch. The wood finish, door number one, gives you a nice little nook here for your Tootsie Rolls. Slide this long, Door open, you got a place for Swedish fish, a 12 volt. This dark crystal here is gonna operate your eight speed automatic. To start and stop the engine, you twist. There's no button, you twist, twist. And then of course we have our key fob, Volvo with the flag. There's the flag, the Swedish flag there. The buttons on the side, two cup holders. Close that up, the leather, the stitching. Ooh, what do we got? USB-Cs, two of them, and you got another nice little cargo storage area for at least a one pound bag of Swedish fish. Seats, they're cloth, so not my favorite, but I do like the style. They're very comfortable, the piping, the stitching, full electric assist for the passenger, full electric assist for the driver, and we got a panoramic sunroof that does open, and it's a power shade. But why don't you come over here to the business end? I want to show you behind the wheel of this XC90 Recharge. All right, guys, business time behind the wheel. You have two memory seat settings for the driver. A simple sill plate. I wish they did something that lit up, but it does say recharge. You have all your seat controls. Move them 20 different ways from Sunday. These seats are amazing. Like, when it comes to how they feel when they're holding your body, I love them. I just wish they weren't cloth. Or if they're going to be cloth, make the cloth a lighter, uh, not a lighter color, but a darker color. Steering wheel. The leather is great. The horn button just doesn't do it for me. I wish that it had a more luxury, top scale, top shelf kind of feel. Other than that, it's a little bland. You got your gloss black on the switch gear. It is a manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel, but you have that nice large 12.3 inch digital display in there. Clear graphics. You could bring up your Google Maps right in the center there, but you could also scroll through a whole cornucopia of different information, which is great. And then other than that, having that information makes life so much easy, easier to just have and to read. Plus you have a head up display on top of that. But let's get in the back seat because I wanna go for a ride in this XC90. All right guys, back seat time. And you know, it's interesting because I feel like I have some room, but then it also feels tight in here and I'll explain. I like the way we have that nice, large panoramic roof. Backs of the seats, I like the, the material's pretty good. You do have the AC vents built into the frame, which I think is so smart, but I gotta zonk the pesky cargo nets. First of all, they don't open very wide. Second of all, I don't know, I like it when it's a nice solid material, not, not the netting. Especially if you're gonna put sharp objects in here, like any kind of old Swedish daggers, or maybe, if you have a Swedish samurai sword, even though there's no such thing. Now, you do have a Twinkie holder right here. Put it right there. And then you do have three stages of heated seats. Still no ventilated seats, but I like the way they give you two USB-Cs. Once you're in, it feels good. The only thing that I think makes it feel tight in here is the high tunnel for the drive shaft. But I do like the way they put plastic over it because when you're like this, 
you're gonna need a place to put your feet and not rip up the carpet, but this is this is kind of dumb. Or you could straddle it like a horse, but I'm sitting over here. You could sit in the center. Feels good sitting here. Headrest feels good. I was about to see if I could fall asleep since the sun's going down. And then of course, mm, nice soft. I just, right now it looks good. What's this gonna look like five years from now after you're rubbing your, you know, your calluses, your gross elbows and everything else. Push that, two cup holders, flip it back. But why don't we go ahead, let's get in the cargo area so that I could take you for a spin. That's what I wanna do. I wanna take you for a drive in this Volvo. All right guys, time to get in that cargo area. Hit the button. Nice electric assist. You're going to be greeted to, first of all, look how low the bumper is. That's good for when you're bringing things into the back. And what you're going to notice with the back seat up, you have, believe it or not, 30 cubic feet of space. You'll notice on the left-hand side, we've got a major Twinkie cargo net holder here. You could put two boxes of Twinkies or a gallon of Yoo-Hoo. And then guess what? Yoo-Hoo! Lift this up, you have all of your charging accessories. You could actually raise and lower the rear of the vehicle. Nicely done with the air suspension. Look at that, it just actually dropped it about three inches. And then of course those seats will do the 60-40 split and fold down to give you, you're basically doubling, you're more than doubling. You're going from 30 cubic feet of space to 63.3 cubic feet of space. But why don't we go ahead, let's put the rubber on the road and go on throttle in this XC90 recharge. All right, guys, we are inside this 2024 Volvo XC60 Recharge Ultimate and the Dark Edition. Right away, I love how the seats feel. They really hold you in nicely. And, you know, getting over the bottom bolster can be a little bit of a bear. But uh, once you're in, man, you are snug as a bug in this thing. Another thing that's really cool is when you go into your different driving modes. So I pull up the driving screen here. I have hybrid, power, pure, off-road, and constant all-wheel drive. When you go into power, the air suspension lowers the whole vehicle. That gives it the intention of being a sportier drive, and that's where the two liter turbocharged inline four will be constantly on with the electric motor and the all wheel drive to give you the ultimate in performance. Now, another thing that I think is so smart on this vehicle is that you have your battery usage. So I could do auto. I have it in hold right now because when I go to drive, which is right now, I'm going to hit auto and that's gonna unlock my 27 miles worth of range of battery and give me that extra boost. If you go pure, that's where you're gonna be able to do pure EV, which will get you 35 miles on a single charge. But I got the head up display, nice clear view. You have all the safety features in here you could ever want. And it's really nice just how well this vehicle rides. It has a great overall damping of the suspension to where it's not too firm. It's definitely not too soft when you're in power mode. And uh, to me, it just, it feels really good. Now, compared to the competition, you're not gonna have that uh, larger displacement, but what you are lacking in displacement with the four cylinder turbo, you are definitely making up for in overall performance with the electric motor. But going down the road, very, very comfortable, even in that power mode. But it's the extra power that you get, which I can't wait to show you, which really elevates the overall driving experience. But I'm going to show you here in a couple seconds what that experience is like. The brakes were great. You have over 15 inches in diameter brakes. Plus, you have the hold feature, which you could take your foot off the brake and it'll hold you in place. But I'm not done yet. Plus, you have the regen braking as well. 
But let's go on throttle. On throttle, here we go. Nice shifts from that ZF8 speed. Brakes feel good, good pedal feel. But I like the communication I'm getting from the steering. That is actually quite surprising in this vehicle, especially when you compare it to the competition. But I think that's what I love about the vehicle is that many people may not even consider it, but once you drive it, that's where really it all comes together. And let's uh, come to a complete stop. Nobody behind us, on oh, throttle, here we go. Instant all wheel drive, all that grip, no slip, and fast, fast shifts. I'll go ahead and push back, pull back on the shifter. That's gonna put me into regen braking. So now it's actually slowing me down, utilizing regen braking, sending, charging to the battery. Display is super clear, makes sense. I love the way you could have the Google Maps right in the center. The only thing that's a little clunky is the AC. Once you get the hang of it, it's not that big of a deal, but uh, I just I just wish I had a, a easy button to adjust the blower fan. I think the other thing that I have to zonk with the AC is that I can't find a nice medium. Like one is too low. If you go up to three, it's too high. And even two is too high. So like that's on two right now. And that's, that's almost like a four in some other vehicles. So kind of weird how you can't get a, a nice in between a two and a three, maybe like a 2.5. Give me a 2.5. But the materials are great in here. Sound any materials are nice. You do get some simulated sound when you're in power mode, uh, but it's not too, too like in your face. I kind of like the way it just adds a little background to it. But I'm gonna take it out of uh, regen braking here. I don't wanna go into reverse, don't wanna do that. Um, regular drive, on oh, throttle, here we go. Let's see how she handles in this right hand bend. On the brakes, look at this, here we go. Nice. And then you're able to get that electric power that just pulls you out of the corner and really gives it a, an exhilarating experience, even though you may not be expecting it. And on throttle, here we go. I tell you, great grip on the brakes. Nice, look at this. On throttle! Gets the power down. Smooth shifts, fast shifts. And I like how balanced the chassis is. I think that's another thing you're really gonna enjoy, whether you're doing spirited driving or if you're doing just your everyday kind of driving. With the battery pack lowering our center of gravity, it really does a great job on the overall handling dynamics of the vehicle and I really, really like that. What I want to do is I want to get you out on the highway and show you how well this XC60 drives. Because remember, with having that uh, plug-in capability, it's going to boost your efficiency over the competition greatly. And I think that's where you're going to get some of the biggest surprises and returns on your uh, on your spending here. But let's go on throttle, shall we? On throttle, here we go. Nice. Look at that, you get up to highway speed very quickly if you need to pass, if you need to merge, if you need to get on the highway, really does its job super duper well. And then going down the road, it just absorbs everything. And like I said, I'm in that power sporty mode, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and hit the little gear here, go back into driving, and we'll go into just hybrid. That adjusts the air ride suspension, softens up the suspension, gives you just a nice driving comfort experience. And then of course you could always go into pure which now I'm just an EV. So really nice to have the versatility. It doesn't tie you to a charging station, but
but yet it allows you to have that efficiency of something more than what the competition is bringing uh, because there really is no other competitor that does as well as this vehicle does with its plug-in capability. You know, you do have Lexus with the RX 450H, but I think you're gonna like the performance and the style of this vehicle a lot more than the Lexus. But just really nice to drive. I mean, it allows you to change lanes because of the visibility, because of all the safety features you have, adaptive cruise, lane keep assist. So it's got you covered there. And the fact that you have those beautiful wheels, I love the exterior paint. Not a lot of road noise, not a lot of wind noise. It actually is very, very surprising how well they've put this whole package together. Even things like the turn single uh, clicks, it's not some obnoxious, like you get into some vehicles and you're just like, God, shut that off. Here, it's light, it's subtle. It doesn't have to be all in your face. When you go into pure mode, it does give you a charge gauge there. So you can see under braking, how it's charging and what power you're utilizing. But right now we're pure EV. And like I said, to have that, not a lot of vehicles within this uh, segment have plug-in plug hybrid capability. I'm gonna go ahead and put it into uh, the full regen braking mode by pulling back on the shift lever. And now we're just, uh, just an EV. Super quiet, super smooth. But just a very unique way of packaging this luxury crossover SUV. And then if I want to go full power, you just hit that button and we're ready to rock and roll. On throttle, here we go. So I think that when it comes to a versatility, I don't know many luxury crossovers that have everything that this uh, Volvo XC60 has, uh, especially the recharge and especially our really good looking one that uh, dark edition but we're gonna get back to where it all started and wrap this one up so i'll see you in a split second all right guys it's been one of those days where you know what it's like you're chasing the stopwatch trying to get the driving done the review done before the sun goes down but guess what we made it happen and it's all thanks to the man behind the camera i gotta say thank you right now stephen flood working his magic just like a wizard with a special wand and magic capabilities. But let me know what you think about this Volvo. We gotta thank everybody at Volvo as well for allowing us access to this price fleet vehicle. 455 horsepower, over 500 pound-feet of torque, and 35 miles pure EV. Is this better than the competition? Let me know how you feel about it in the comment section. But if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Raised Rides family. We're gonna go ahead and thank Stephen Flood from Stephen Flood Photography a second time because he, third, he deserves it. He deserves an extra scoop of raisins in his raisin brand. That's what he's all about. So thank you, Stephen, for your hard work. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.